video games Whoa. are for nerds. Aww. But that doesn't mean we can't talk about them. That's why you're listening to The Week in Gaming, the only gaming podcast that breaks down the last seven days and tears games apart from the inside. Ugh. So forget your worries, open your ears, and join Simon Miller and a co-host for the entertainment chatter you need. Also, screw Dark Souls. Hello, it's Monday. My name is Simon Miller. You're listening to a podcast about games, and as it's my voice, it is indeed the week in gaming. If you just stumbled across this and you think you'd like a little bit of synopsis, it is indeed a podcast about video games. Said that twice now, but deal with it. It's like super hot here in the in the UK. I know no one likes British people moaning about the the hot weather, but I'm a big fan of the cold. So when it goes hot, I can't handle it at all. In fact, you may even be able to hear my fan in the background. I'm going. That may make for terrible audio, but this podcast will only be like ten minutes when I have my fan on. That is how hot. I am. Uh, as always, I am joined by my man Sam. Sam, how are you doing today? Yeah, I've also got a fan on, so yeah, I'm similarly warm. Well, it, it's just the only way. There is no. <laughs> I don't know if anybody wants to hear us moaning on about the heat. I'm, you may live in South Africa for all I know, which I'm sure is a thousand times hotter. But I'm, I'm not built for this weather. I'm just not. It is, it is horrendous. It's just relentless. It's just been weeks and weeks and weeks of it. <laughs> it really has. And over the weekend, I think it got to like 34 at one point. Which is just yeah. Miller, Miller ain't built for that shit, man. That <laughs> just that just makes me want to die. Anyway, we won't talk about that. Although, as we did say last week, and we will continue to say this week, um, when when the weather does get like this, or in the summer months, I mean, games just stop. I was yep. looking around over the weekend and today for stuff to talk about. And I was like, "There's absolutely nothing. Uh, no one's talking about anything. No one's really saying anything or doing anything." So. You know, really, there's no news. You may have seen the odd tidbit around, but there's, you know, nothing has really brought um, the world of video games to its knees. So, Sam, I know you've got a couple of interesting games you want to talk about, so we're going to talk about that. I also asked uh, for some questions on my Twitter at Simon316, which we will also talk about. And then, as we said last week, we're going to do a little chat about Banjo-Kazooie, because it is, we've just ticked over 20 years which since that mad. game was released, which terrifies the absolute... I mean, how that's possible, I, I, I don't even know. Um, but we'll do that last. We'll end with that. We'll end with the Banjo Kazooie's chat. I'm more intrigued. Tell you mentioned them before we began, Sam. You yep. you finished two indie games I've never even heard of, which is weird because usually I'm quite good. I'm not going to say keeping up with indie games, but I like to you know I like to know what people are playing. Are these like indie games that have grabbed people's attentions, or they're just ones that you saw and you thought, "Ask ah, her, I'll play it and see what happens." Well, I'm going to start with the Spectrum Retreat. Right, the Spectrum because... Retreat. Yes. The Spectrum Retreat, if we're getting pedantic about it. <laughs> um, but it, the guy is currently 19 who made this. Uh, he's in Leicester University, I think. I think it's Leicester. Uh, and no, he had some help from Ripstone Games. So I think that it was just sort of he had the concept and they sort of helped, you know, with a bit of you know polish and just adding a few bits and pieces. And uh, he won the BAFTA Young Game Designer for making this game in 2016. And so it's finally come out, and it's basically it's very it's one of those games where if you say something about it, you said a little bit too much. But in the, the its basic premise is that you are in a hotel, you wake up at a hotel, the the Spectrum Retreat, and you 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 hear a voice on the phone saying like you need to get out, but you can't let the staff know that you know, like so it, it's got that sort of. Um, the unsettling air about it. You had to sort of avoid the staff suspicions who are all androids. Um, Handy. <laughs> but, yeah. So, but the narrative isn't really the important bit because it's a puzzle game at heart and it involves, you have to go up the floors and to unlock each floor, you need to go through a series of levels which involve uh, moving colors from blocks to other blocks. And it's only by, this is so hard to explain, but when you have, uh, say you have the red colour equipped, you can then go through red doors. But then right. you need to find a block to switch the red colour out for to get through a blue door, if you know what I mean. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's sort of half puzzle game and half sort of tale of why you're in there. And for one guy with the help of, you know, Ripstone Games, that's uh, outstanding. Really good, really good game. I'm watching it now. I'm watching trailers and gameplay videos and stuff. I'm not surprised you're having a hard time to describe it because it's one of those indie games where it just looks insane. Like it's like it, puzzle games, like The Witness, right? It's like, well, how do you explain The Witness? It's like lines. 
And then people just like, oh, lions, okay, sure. Well, yeah, it's basically like a, a newspaper puzzle that's just managed to be digitized, but it's also really interesting. Um, but no, yeah, I'm, looking at it now, I'm looking at it now. It's one of those games where I think I'd enjoy it if you played it, but it has such a... It, it goes so full in with the whole indie aesthetic. I can understand why a lot of people would look at it and just dismiss it as just another indie game. I yeah, it's not that it. long, though, so it is worth just a visit. And the puzzles, it's not, it's not like puzzles in the sense it's hyper-difficult and you won't actually finish it. It is just, it's taxing, but, you know, you, you get through it. It's not it's never frustrating, which but is nice. Not necessarily in terms of quality. It was like Portal, the original yeah. one, where it's like a two-hour, just sort of really unique original experience that you kind of walk away from going, wow, that was really interesting. Yeah, like it's got definite portal vibes about it. I, I guess you can't be a first person puzzler without having well, portal true, vibes, true. right? So that's um, true. Um, but yeah, no, really good game, really, really good. Well, it's just, yeah, I don't know. It's just, yeah, I, I don't even know what to say about it. I, I know I'm just stumbling over my words here. But I mean, if you go and watch the, uh, you know, any any video of it, and you'll soon start to understand. Like you say, I don't think there's really much you can say because. What, what I mean, it's not. I'm, I'm watching him now, and I'm just like, what is what is going on? It, 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 it's very much. I don't like this term, but it's very walking simulator esque. Uh, yeah, and I use that as a very broad term. I, I think. I mean, there are some boring walking simulators, but you know, some games that fall within that remit are actually also very intelligent and fun and just intriguing. I think that's the key. With them. they've got to be intriguing. Yeah, um, and that certainly does the like. I, mean, look, I, I think. Yeah, I think you've got it. You hit the nail on the head. I'm like I said, I'm just sort of flicking through a video now. But anyone that likes that kind of We'll call it the quintessential indie game in 2018, only because they're so successful, and why the hell not? And if he's only 19 as well, good grief. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I believe it's 19, um, because he is in his first year of university, so that's sort of the way I got that figure from. But either way, you know, like young, a very young man, and I've been working on the concept, because he got the concept of the colours, and then sort of built the game around that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, no, really good, really good narrative. And it's nice that the narrative in a puzzle game isn't just sort of something to tie the puzzles together. Yeah, like, that's true. when... When the narrative strands unraveled, I was like, oh, shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's just like, you don't really get that. Because in, even in Portal, it's just like, um, it's until we got heavy, sort of, yeah. to the end, it was like, okay, yeah. We're, we're in a test chamber. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But it, it, there's loads of video game references in it as well. I've already noticed yeah. like four. It looks, it looks good, actually. I, I just think it's one of those games. How much is it just on Steam at the moment? I'm guessing. I was on PS4 no, I, as well. I so I think it's kind of switch. I couldn't tell you because I, I got a code for it, but okay. so yeah, I, it can't be that much because it's like six hours. So on Switch, I better be really good. I think that's one of those games that would work a treat on, on yeah. Switch and stuff. Well, it's um, how much is it on Steam? Oh, it doesn't tell me. Oh, it's not out yet. It's not out to the 13th of July. Wait, you're, sl- you're smashing it, Sam. You're giving, you're giving us all the deets three days before it comes out. But I have no idea how much it is. I imagine, yeah, I imagine it's not that much at all. But uh, no, actually, genuinely, it looks very, very intriguing. Uh, what was the other one that you played? Uh, Tacoma. Right, yeah, see, I never heard of that either because I'm a bad person. Um, no, I don't know. I mean, uh, have you heard of Gone Home? Yes, oh, I know Gone Home, yeah. Okay, so it's by the same people. I didn't know That's that. I didn't know they were next working game on something. Off. Yeah, um, have you played Gone Home? Yes, I have, yeah. Okay, so they announced Tacoma in that very, very... You remember in Xbox's press conference in 2017, where they were like, we've got a thousand games, and like two exclusives, but a thousand <laughs> games. <to see." laughs> and it was, one, it was among those. Um, and that was obviously it caught my eye because I loved Gone Home. And it's much the same thing. There's no real people in it. Um, so what you do is you go through... So, to give a bit of premise, the Tacoma is a space station where all the actions of the six crew members on board are recorded, and then you can play that back in AR. So, say there's someone walking from room A to room B in a two-minute window. When you walk in there, you can play them, and there'll be like a green figure, and you'll hear all of their words as they move from one room to another. This sounds like a Black Mirror episode. Yeah, and it's only by you can look, you can not really look at any of the narrative clues, um, but it's only by listening to those narrative clues that you hear the story of the different people, and you need, you know, uh, it's like gone home environmental clues. It's packed full of information, really, and they're very human story, not that long. So, like, gone home in space with a bit more, with a bit different storytelling mechanics it was just really nice and it's like very like you say very walking simulator-esque but i mean if you like gone home it's definitely tacoma it's definitely one to watch it's already out they come out last yeah, year it's been out since last year yeah yeah, yeah. So I, I, again i'm looking at them now and i was like i don't have got the right game or not i presume it is what else is called tacoma in video games yeah uh, i think that's one of those things that just happens sometimes games just pass me by uh, completely but again it's, it's that classic thing where you look at it and you're just like man 
yeah, it, it's really hard. Again, it's like explaining... Oh, what was the game that I always feel like kicked off the indie movement? I was... Uh, ah, damn it. When you could turn back time and you're that, that kid with the stupid hair. Life is Strange? No, no, way before that. Uh, the one where you... Uh, the original one by the guy that did The Witness. Braid! Thank you, Brain. Uh-huh. It always reminds me of that. Any time someone said explain Braid, I was like, I can't. I can't. Let's just just, just, do, just go play it. It's really weird. And it's the um, hardest sell because if you like, I can't tell you anything about it, but go play it. And then everyone's like, hmm. Yeah, that's no, true. It's true. It's even stuff like, um, oh, what was it called? Uh, the Swapper. Do you remember The Swapper? No. <laughs> yeah, The Swapper was really good, but trying to explain it to anyone it made it sound horrendous. Um, not horrendous, it's really boring, but that's a really, really good game. I think, yeah, I think these are the kind of things that keep the, almost keep the video game scene alive in the, in the summer. Because I, I know one came out last year, but I think it gives you a time to go back and play stuff like that. And the, uh, um, the Spectrum, whatever the hell it was called as well, that, looks really, that, that just looks nuts. And I can imagine people really, really get excited about that who, uh, who've been following it and you know, want to know. Yeah, want to know what's going on and stuff. Well, that's interesting. I mean, it's good because I've, I've just been playing Mario Tennis all week. So there's, <laughs> no, there's no point talking about that again. It's just so good. It's just, Are you pro I mean, now? I'm pretty good. I want to get as good as I am at Mario Kart. That's my, that's my key. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of hammering it that sense. But there's no point talking about it again. A lot of people are down on it now and saying the single player's crap. Whatever. In multiplayer or you know, even just the basic tennis game. It's such a good arcade tennis game. But I won't talk about it again. It's just brilliant. And I hope, I hope that yeah, Nintendo iterate on that. As the weeks and months or the months and weeks go by, and is that we, the only thing you've been playing? It's literally the only thing I've been playing. Yeah, I was, I was all over the place last week, driving and, and doing stuff. So um, it was just that on my Switch, I, you know, as and when, as and when I could. I had a couple of games on Mario Kart, but everyone knows how good Mario Kart is. Yeah. Um, now, other than that, yeah, I mean, like I say, I, I've just been so nuts recently. I've, I haven't really played anything. Um, there are certain games that yeah, did we, we talked about Wolfenstein on Switch last week. You did, didn't you? Did that? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I, I do. I, I still think that is. I just I like the Switch at the moment. I think out of all the three consoles I've got, there's nothing on my PS4 that I want to play at the moment, other than FIFA, but that doesn't count. Xbox One I haven't turned on in ages now, but Switch is always maybe because it's just so easy to pick up and play it. But yeah, I just uh, and you can sort of just play it on the. There's no boot up, or it's just you just switch it on, play it on the couch for ten minutes, put it down again. Yeah, all. exactly. It's just it's just nice. Uh, one thing I I did mean to talk about as well, actually, uh, news wise, is that apparently, I mean, who knows this stuff? But the Microsoft Store apparently has leaked their release dates for Dark Siders Three. Yeah, um, apparently it's coming out November twenty seventh, which seems like a bit nuts to me, just because. I mean, I don't mean it's horribly. I like Darksiders, but it feels like a game that should come out next month as opposed yeah. to trying to... I mean, that's basically after everything big's come out. So you're really asking a lot of people's sort of entertainment budget. But I know it depends what they have planned for it. Maybe maybe it's awesome. You know, we haven't seen anything for months anyway. And the first two games were good. The problem with Darksiders 2 is that THQ were too ambitious with it. That was the real issue. You know, they, they, they went too, too hard in with it and they thought they could sort of bring it up to, I don't know, Call of Duty levels or something like that high, but you know, make it their kind of Call of Duty. It never really had that aesthetic. It always felt more of a popular niche game, which is why you know, it kind of killed their forecast and then and then killed everything else. But I don't know. I mean, the last Dark Siders two came out what two thousand and ten? Yeah, I think so. And then you had the War Mastered, which is ugh, just just awful naming. Yeah, yeah. Two thousand twelve, it came out. So really, you know, yeah. we're, we're working on five six years, which is I don't know. We'll see what happens. Like, I hope it does well. But November 27th to me seems like a very interesting time uh, uh, time, time for it to come out. Uh, but like I said, other than that, there's not, there's not a lot going on in video games right now. What's yeah. Apart from, did you see all that nonsense about Uncharted? Uh, no. So, like, I mean, I don't really know what, what everyone went nuts about. And I was like, okay, well, it's kind of cool. So, um, I think it was an animator or something on the game tweeted out that they learned since joining Naughty Dog that Drake doesn't actually take bullet damage. Oh and, yeah, I did. yeah, That's and the red—I just read it. The ready wire that shows hits is to represent his luck running out. Eventually, his enemies will get a clear shot and kill him if he takes en- enough near misses. That just sounds like a terrible idea to me. <laughs> like, like I, I either want to be hit by a bullet or I don't. I don't just want to be sort of plastered with bullets. And eventually, oh, you died. So I, I didn't know what the hell. That, they, everyone went crazy about that, and I was just like, that just sounds ridiculous to me. Yeah, I, just it's a bit weird to just be like, oh, by the way. Yeah, I, I don't know what that was, but look, everyone talked about it, so I've mentioned it now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and again, I mean, other than that, video games won't pick up until until next week when games oh, August, I should say, when games start games start coming out again. But I did ask some questions, which uh, you can always keep an eye out for at Simon at three sixteen. 
which we uh, we'll answer now. Then we'll have a big chat about Banjo Kazooie. So you know, all the if you're mine and Sam's age, you can get excited about that. Well, I'm older than Sam. I'm older than everybody. <laughs> um, I start at the bottom and work my way up. Sam Overton said, "What games do you like to see on the Xbox backwards compatibility list?" Blur is one I would love to see on there. Well, actually, I was going to say I don't care about backwards compatibility. Then you said that. I thought, actually, no, I'd like to see Blur too. But then, say, then my problem with backwards compatibility, it's a really cool gimmick. And then I go to use it. I'm like, I don't want to play these games. I played these games. And, you know, Blur is probably an exception. But there's so many games that I do play. I'm like, ah, it's all right. It's okay. But, you know, it's age and this and that and up and down and left and right. And it's never, I don't know, apart from games that come out on. I don't know, like like a, some kind of retro, like 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 the the, the retro uh, Nintendo's retro eShops and stuff. Yeah, uh, which I know is different. It's not backwards compatibility. So yeah, but not even that. But it's more. Do I? Let me phrase this a bit better. Do I want to play going back a few years? Um, uh, uh, Zelda: Ocarina of Time on my 3DS. Yes, I do because now it's compatible, and you know it feels like something I want to do. But you know, do I want to play? I don't know, Halo Three on my Xbox One. Not particularly. I just don't. I just it just doesn't seem. I don't know. There was a time when I thought in my world backwards compatibility was important, so I think it must be important to some people. So it yeah. would be good if they kind of treated it because I do think it's a bit awful to charge someone hundreds of pounds and go, nope, <laughs> yeah, that, that's the end of that. But at the same time, for me personally, I can't see myself playing games that I played before or missed. I think I just look forward rather than back. Yeah, I'm so glad you said that though because I think a lot of people like the idea of it more than the actual practicality of it i think xbox released some figures like last year or something saying that like you, you know not actually a lot of people play backwards compatibility as much as you all claim to love it and uh, it's just because a lot of people were just like yeah I'll, i'd love to play fallout 3 again and then you go and you're like can't be bothered to play Fallout. yeah exactly 3. yeah i've done this why do i want to do it again why not play fallout 4 or fallout yeah. whatever the thing's coming next week uh, next month or whenever it is later in the year but in terms of more back i mean they've got 350 games i can't think of any that aren't on the list already you know what i mean um Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, maybe. Oh you know what? That's, that's that's not a bad game, you know. Nuts and Bolts. Yeah. I mean, it's not it's not kind of the Banjo Kazooie that many people wanted. But I actually thought, especially where Rare were at the time when they weren't really smashing out creative stuff as much as we were used to, I actually thought Nuts and Bolts was quite a nice callback to games we weren't really getting at that stage. I quite liked it. Yeah, it was a proper sandboxy sort of thing, and it was cool. Yeah, yeah building the cars and all the yeah, the crate and stuff. I thought, hey, this is not too bad. Uh, but yeah, I'm not really a backwards compatible guy anymore just i don't know i don't know i can't explain it just doesn't it's hard enough to play new games let alone adding old ones into the mix yeah but, exactly but with that said i do think it should be a thing i get it if it's important to people and you paid hundreds of pounds it seems unfair to uh yeah to, to steal it away uh mike or mike what's your opinion on the greatest game franchise of all time metal gear solid well i think we talked about this before but i'll answer it again i think metal gear solid is awesome and the more i've thought about it and this is going to be quite a controversial opinion. I haven't played that much of it, but I think that kind of sums it up as well. I actually think Metal Gear Solid Five is the worst one. And when I say worse, I don't mean it's a bad game. I mean, if I, if I went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I'd put 5 at the bottom of my list. But I think it's a great game. I love Metal Gear games. I think they're great because it's weird and it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I think they're good. But it's just, I think it's very much, it would have benefited to play them like as they came out. Because I tried to, because re- like, I'm one someone who likes to play games in order if it's the same characters and whatever. Um, but revisiting Metal Gear Solid 1 is just, there's some horrible control choices in the entirety of that franchise. And I, I know the rabid Kojima fans are like, no, no, you just don't get it. But it's just like some, like aiming to shoot sometimes is an absolute, <laughs> just, the, just the whole aiming to shoot thing is horrendous. Especially in um, Metal Gear Solid 2, it's awful in Metal Gear Solid 2. Yeah, but I did play Metal Gear Solid 2 and 4, and just, yeah, they're really good. Like, there's no other game that does what Metal Gear Solid does, and I think that's just that's enough for a lot of praise. So. I, I agree. I, I think, I mean, my problem was that I played Metal Gear Solid 2 first, because I didn't have an original PlayStation until later on. Yeah. Um, so I do have a soft spot for Metal Gear Solid 2, and I know a lot of people didn't like it, but I did. Metal Gear Solid 4, I think, is just the most bonkers interactive movie ever made. I think it's fantastic. Classic Metal- things are just crazy. Oh, I mean, it's just nuts, but I do I do like it, and some of the production in it is it's just fantastic. Metal Gear Solid 3 is probably the best game of the bunch. Um, probably not my favourite. And then, yeah, Metal Gear Solid 5 is good, but it's just too open world for me. It, it almost, I think we talked about this before, but it almost fell into, um, what would you call it? Just Cause Territory where the world was too big 
too much to do. Yeah, and, and, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It just, it just, it didn't feel focused enough. Was 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 my problem with it. But hey, look, it was. Yeah, I I love Metal Gear Solid. It wouldn't be surprise me if soon we're going to get one that's made that not obviously not made by Kojima. Somebody else will step up and you know take advantage of that. So we'll have to wait and see. But that would be my guess. Yeah, but I love it. I love it. I think it's I think it's a wonderful franchise. And I'd be intrigued to see what a non a non Kojima one looks like. Maybe it'd be a better game. We don't know. We just don't know. Uh, By the way, IGN has just reported that November twenty seventh is the release date for Dark Siders though. Confirmed. Confirmed well, to IGN. So you know, just that's IGN's fault. If yeah, it's not. yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, we'll see. That's a strange release date for me. After because by then, what's come out? Call of Duty's come out. Battlefield's come out. Uh, Assassin's Creed will have been out. A lot of people are going to spend a lot of money. But who knows? Maybe it gets great reviews and gets people talking. I don't want to... It's I got don't... a $400 Apocalypse Edition. Oh, man. What's in it? Um, copy of the game. 11-inch tall Fury figurine. Premium box, steel book, art book, soundtrack. Uh, premium box, 30-inch by 40-inch wall scroll with hanger. Heavyweight amulet and necklace. Four figurines. And... I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, if you love Darksiders... Get start saving up now. You have a lot of spare cash. <laughs> Video games are so weird. But hey, look, if, if they sell it, then they should have done it. Simple as that. If there's demand and you make it, you can't get mad at it because people wanted it. So yeah, that's what people. When people get mad at Apple for charging as much as they do, it's just like, well, people are buying it. Like, I, I charge that much. If yeah, I'm no, exactly. in that position. Exactly. It's a bit what business is all about. You don't have to like it. But again, like DLC, if you release DLC and everybody buys it, you did the right thing. Because it was there yeah. to make money, and it did. It doesn't mean the practices aren't all over the place, but it still achieved its goal. Uh, so, yeah, $400 Dark Side of 3 edition coming to you in late November. Uh, Courtney Summers, any thoughts on the new video game commercial with Kenny Omega? Do you think this means we'll see more stars outside WWE doing them? That was for Street Fighter, right? Did you see that, Sam? Uh, no. Was it for... I can't. I did see it. Hang on, I'll look it up. Um, uh, what, the, what the hell was it for? Was it for Fire Pro? Maybe it was for Fire Pro. I think it was for Fire Pro. Or was it for Street Fighter? I don't... Well, so he did, you know, he did do a Fire Pro one, which I watched, which he was good in. But didn't he do one... I swear he did one for Capcom as well, right? I literally could not tell you. I don't I th- think... I, I, think I, I think he did it. I think he did a commercial for Cody being announced in something or other. But I did watch both of them. I can't remember the top of my head. Um, no, not really. I, don't, I can't see... I can see more stars of outside WWE doing... Yeah, products with that because they have more freedom. But I just think, you know, right now Capcom and Cody and uh, Kenny Omega have an affinity because he's very vocal with all his Street Fighter stuff with Xavier Woods. Uh, I think he's one of a kind. But yeah, I think, you know, if, if like Cody Rhodes, for example, loves Zelda. So I'm sure if they saw a tie and they saw a reason it could help shift more copies, they probably would do something with him. Like, you know, like they did with Robin Williams' daughter back in the day. Yeah. Um, obviously, because she was called Zelda. So yeah, potentially. But I, I did like I did like seeing Kenny Omega and those things. I thought it was. Um, I thought it was good. Nikki Wilson, you told me three years ago Shenmue 3 was coming out. Where is it and why do games take so long to make? Well, no, no. Shenmue 3 does not count when it does not fit into the category of any normal video game. And I didn't tell you it was coming out. Sony told us it was coming out. And that's now, in hindsight, shite press conference where they just made a load of shit up and threw it out there. That's what they did in that press conference. Let's yeah. not pretend otherwise. But, oh, look, we're going to tell you everything you want to hear, but nothing is near prepared. I, I don't think Shenmue 3 is ever going to come out. And if it does, I don't think it's going to be what anybody ever wanted it to be. I think by this stage, it's too far gone, and the expectation is too high, and the budget is too low. That's just what I think. Yeah, I. It's just not. Nothing is pointing towards it being a good, <laughs> a good experience for anyone. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it'll come out. I just don't think it'll be good. <laughs> so. I mean, the problem is, is I don't think you or I really care about Shenmue either, right? No, no, I mean, it was one of those games where I was like, oh, I might want to replay those. And then I looked, and all you do is sort of wander around just stacking books or some shit, and then it's just like, well, it looks pretty boring, actually. So. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I agree, but that probably does put us on a more, you know, different <laughs> track than most people, because I imagine if you really love it, you're going to be excited about this. Yeah, personally, I don't. Yeah. But I mean, like, that also changes things because you're not looking at the realities that you just like. Because I'm not, I don't hate it. I'm just neutral. Yeah, and I, it's just I, just, like, I just don't care. Yeah. And when you look at it, it's just it, nothing looks good from a neutral perspective. That's no, true. It's true. I totally. It just it does look dull. It does. Um, but it has been three years somehow. I think maybe you're going to wait another pff, late next year at the earliest. 
So if yeah, I make it to the next generation. Yeah, yeah, I would just maybe forget about it for now. For now. It doesn't exist. They announced it way too soon. Same with Final Fantasy VII Remaster. Another game I don't really care about, so I'm not the man to talk about it. Uh, Indie yeah. Clone 77. Have you ever played Ghostmaster? And if not, can I buy it for you? I don't even know what Ghostmaster is. What is Ghostmaster? What is Ghostmaster? I have no idea. I'm going to type it in. Ghost. Well, I was about to say Ghost Recon. I was like, yeah. I like Ghostmaster. That's a fucking great game. Ghostmaster. Ghostmaster. Ghostmaster is a puzzle oh, stretch game. This game. Have you? <laughs> what is it? It's just about ghosts, isn't it? Like, but you, you, you reacted like you were really excited, like it was actually good. Um, well, no, it's just because like, it was one of those games that uh, it looks proper PS2, I'm going to imagine. Um, so it's just when I was a kid and any game that had a good cover was good. Uh, um, <laughs> Ghostmaster has you controlling a squad of ghosts, each with different powers in order to frighten mortals. So it's like The Sims, but you're in control of ghosts. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, like, like Sims Ghostbusters hybrid. Yeah, because I mean, this came out in 2003 when I imagine The Sims was massive. So this sounds like... So, when I mean, you can buy it from me. Whether I actually play it, debatable. It's three ninety nine, so, you know. And you could gift with Steam, so, you know, go, go for it. Amazingly. So I've just clicked on a, a listing for it. And the, the bullet point points are totally original gameplay where the player does the scaring. Control the bad guys for a change. 50 ghosts to conjure up and scare the living daylights out of people. 150 powers for your spirits to haunt with. Actually, this is for you spirits, as a typo. Over 20 levels that need lane to rest. Groundbreaking graphical and technical advances. AI-led storyline tailors to players' actions. Well, there you go. I've never played. Yeah, you, I, mean, I mean, don't buy it for me, but you could. I mean, and it's got <laughs> revolutionary special effects. That's crazy. <laughs> you can't write that stuff. If you write that stuff, within six months, you've already lied on your packaging. Because technology moves so fast. Oh, dear. Garth, do you think Sega, Google, anyone else should enter the console market? And do you think they could come close to Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo? Uh, not Sega, because Sega is just not the company it once was. And really, they don't have the money. That's the truth. They just don't have the money to do it. So there's no point in them even, even yeah. trying. It would be a mistake. If anything, if they're going to heavily reinvest, they should heavily reinvest into their games division. Which is yeah. doing okay, but it's not. Again, if they really want to make a push, you should start there. And that's not really what they're doing, which is fine. Sega are doing well. They have a few really, really popular franchises. And to be honest, it's nice that they're just alive in general. You know, that's a, that's a, that's a good thing to, to, to have. Yeah. Uh, Google, I actually think, is a very good shout. Google could enter the video game space, and they could be successful, because much like Microsoft, they have cash to burn. And I yeah. think that's the only way you get in nowadays, is if you can just go, well, I can just keep hurling money at this until it works. And also, Google really are at the forefront of a lot of technological advances that we see. So they could probably come up with some ideas that people would actually be interested. Also, they're a brand that people like. Uh, I know they do controversial things. However, they are popular. There's no two ways about it. So, yes, they, they could. <coughs> they could do things in AR as well that um, we haven't seen before because nobody really is doing AR um, gaming apart from phones. But they could, because uh, Google, is it Microsoft HoloLens? But Google are doing some AR stuff. Um, and, you know, like you say, they've got loads of loads of money to just be piling into something and if it doesn't work they can just try another something <laughs> or even acquire people even acquire some developers yeah i i think yeah but i, I would like to see some no i wouldn't i wouldn't i think i, I don't mind somebody else coming in as they do something different i don't want another playstation or xbox why we all like nintendo right because they do something different so yeah if we could do something they are or whatever google would come up with then great but if not i'm not interested uh, yeah. You know, they, I, I don't feel like that's what we're lacking. I think we're lacking interesting game experiences. Well, that's, that's a bit of a broad statement because that's not true. But you know what I mean? That's what I'd like to see more of. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, Google, yeah, I, I think that would be good if they could come up with something interesting. Um, my name is Fack. Not true. If you could pick a location for GTA 6, where would you pick? <sighs> London, right? I think that's just the easy one. I just think it'd be... In today's day and age where we have the technology that we do and Rockstar go so good at... Uh, you know, creating those worlds. I Just as a guy that lives in London, I'd like to see London. It's as simple as that, really. Probably not for everybody, but I would enjoy it. Oh, I don't think I'd like London, to be honest. I'd just like them not to do more of the same, but just, like, get that GTA map, make it bigger, and include more variety in it. Because at the moment, you have, like, in uh, Los Santos, there's desert, and then there's, like, city, you know? Yeah. Uh, just, get a, just get a bigger map, go all out with it. Uh, Maybe multiple cities on the map. Um, I, I can yeah. see them doing the world one day. It could even be GTA <laughs> 6 where you just literally you can fly anywhere you want. But that's rock stuff for you, right? Like, yeah. you know, just ambition up the nines, don't care, 
and it will somehow somehow make it work because that's what they, that's what they can do. So I can see, yeah, GTA Planet Earth eventually eventually yeah. happen, but um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, Nick Eve, hello Simon. My question is this: Fortnite, why? <laughs> Good question. I don't uh, that's, know. A, that's a very open question. I I can't get into it properly. I've tried. It's just. I'm just not good enough, I don't think. And nor do I have the the willingness to get good. I think that's the problem. I, I lack the two fundamental things to smash the Fortnite barrier. Yeah, no, I mean, I play it, but I just hate hate the community so much. Well, when people just like, uh, oh, so you're a Fortnite fan? When I tell them to play it, I'm just like, hold on, hold on, no, no, no. Let's not let's not jump to that. I play Fortnite. I'm not one of those Fortnite fans. <laughs> you don't catch me doing the dances on the street or. You know anything like that? Just I just play it, and that's it. <laughs> because, I, I, sorry, go on. I guess I do always notice that the England uh, the England football team still do that when they do their dances. I recognise those Fortnite dances. I see them. Yeah, it's just Jesse Lingard. Oh, just yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. It's just it's just some of the cringe. At least it's not like the worst fan base of all time, like Rick and Morty. It's just horrendously cringe, <laughs> and I just can't take it. I just really can't take it because. No. When kids come up to you who are under the 12 rage rating of the game and they're just like, oh, yeah, you play Fortnite. And it's just like, oh, my God. Just, I don't want to, I don't want to say yes. <laughs> and that sums up Fortnite. My interesting thing with Fortnite is how long is it going to last? The bubble will burst. The bubble always burst. Look at PUBG. I understand that Fortnite stole its stone. I don't know it's still doing well, but the bubble has burst there um to compared to what it was and this will happen with fortnite and i wonder who knows maybe call of duty does it maybe call of duty's battle royale mode is so good everyone goes and plays that it might be like pokemon go though fortnite might have built themselves such a huge fan base that if when it falls it doesn't really fall to its well, that's death. true too yeah that's true too. um because i assume pubg is still doing okay it's not really dead no no no, uh, no but it, i mean it just lacks that i don't know it just, you can just feel that the it's peaked basically which everything yeah. does you know, everything peaks and then come back down um, I can't pronounce at U W A I and a load of S's. <laughs> U ways, we wise. Uh, favorite game developers. Uh, Nintendo is up there at the top. Uh, I still like uh, well, Epic Games pre Fortnite were my favorites up there because of Gears of War. Um, so you, you distinctly get to sever itself from Fortnite, just like anything other than Fortnite. Well, it, it's probably I'd say Epic Games just in relation to Gears of War. Really, like I like Unreal Tournament, but it, it didn't. I didn't enjoy it as much as uh, huh. Gears of War. Um, it just, I'm just trying to think of games that I like. I mean, Nintendo up there. I mean, Bethesda at one stage again, but I just I've, I've like I've said a million times on this podcast, I've now just ruined myself on those games by playing them too much. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Well, who's your Sam? Who do you like? Fulbright, the people who made Gone Home and Tacoma, I was thinking about this um, the other day. It seems relevant to bring those up. I think they're really good. Do storytelling without any people in there, it's which impressive. is a really, really good, um, really good feat. Uh, really human stories as well, because you get people to try to tell emotional stories and it never really comes off in games sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, they're really good at what they do. Understated, which is good, because Naughty Dog, as much as they're very good at what they do, they, they have got the bombast money behind them and stuff like that. Whereas I think it's, it's nice when indie developers get stuff right and you know they don't have that same, you know, mammoth <laughs> backing from a big name. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Naughty Dog as well, obviously. Um, I think they're, they're really good at what they're doing, especially in the single player space. Uh, and other developers. Team Ico, I got put in there. I, I, it's basically based on two games, but still it's true. You know, Shadow Colossus and Ico, I think, are two of the greatest games ever made. So it'd be silly not to, to, to put them in there. So yeah, I throw them in there. Um, Insomniac are good. Yes, I mean not someone that I'd necessarily, you know, not like a go-to or anything like that. But yes, they are very, very good. I, I just have the games that I enjoy playing. I mean, pff, I think as, as stupid as it may sound, I think Nintendo's probably my favourite. Really, yeah. I mean, they're high quality. It's not not necessarily controversial. You know what I mean? No, but I mean, some people go, oh, of course, but yeah. I <laughs> just I like them so you well, know. What do you ever it's mean? an assured seal of quality. Like, why would you hate that? Yeah, no, it is. I just uh, they just they just make me happy, and they you know, and again, of course, they uh, they win just by you know giving me uh, giving me a video games that remind me of my childhood, and not a lot of other people can do that just because that's how life works. 
it's a good way to look at it, I think, when you see that Nintendo, nobody does what Nintendo does as well as Nintendo does it. And I think that's a sign of a good developer. Yeah, yeah no, I totally agree. Uh, the Evil Bread, good name. If you were admitted to Theme Hospital, what condition would you have? Oh, man. Uh, I don't know. Uh, probably, probably some kind of food poisoning. I eat a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> some kind of food poisoning. I don't know. Uh, I, I am looking forward. What's that new game they got coming out? Two Point Hospital. Yeah, I'm, I lo- honestly, I like those games to such a degree. I am excited to play that. I really, really, really am. I, I think it would be quite fun. Yeah, it's... um. It- I, can't, I can vaguely remember Theme Hospital for when I was a kid. I remember it just being fun and just silly and just take the piss. And I didn't really care if it went well because if you didn't, everyone would just be vomiting all over the place and that's funny anyway. <laughs> and yeah, so, um, it'll be fun, I think. It'll be nice to have that sort of management. If you get the silly management, that's sort of out the window a little bit. You get all the very serious simulation games. And it's like it's nice to have Jurassic World where you can let dinosaurs run around and everything. And now Two Point Hospital. Yeah, no, I look forward to that. And finally, Pip Mason, has there ever been a game you acknowledge that's good, but for some reason you can't bring yourself to play? For me, it's Near Automata. I know it's a genius example of game design, the combat is amazing, but the melancholy tone and story makes my anxiety depression flare up. That is interesting. Okay. Um, probably. I love games aesthetics I can't play if it's too dark and gloomy or whatever. I'm sorry, I was just... Uh, but I mean, I can't think of one on top of my head. But I can understand why it would do that because it's like any kind of art, for lack of a better term, right? Like if you it, you can you can appreciate that it's good, but the way that it's been uh, done, I guess, yeah, it can certainly make things flare up. Although I can't think of one on top of my head, no. Yeah, mine's the Resident Evil remake. I really liked what it was doing, but what it was doing in terms of the controls, just I just did not want to do. Uh, which is, you know, a shame because I really like. I really think I'll play Resident Evil Two because it seems a bit more fluid in terms of the controls. But with those tank controls in Resident Evil One, I just did not want to play that. Um, but I've watched playthroughs of it and I liked it that way. So, yeah, I think that sometimes in in situations like that, that's where the whole YouTube thing does come into its own. It, it, it always seems so bizarre to this day that somebody would want to watch somebody else play a game, but it works. It works. So. Yeah, I once had someone who said Last of Us was their favourite game of all time and they'd only watched a playthrough of it on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, well, whatever, sure. <laughs> well, that's the world we live in, man. It's yeah. just the world we live in. Uh, and that's it. That's all the questions. I did put that tweet out very late, but always keep an answer at Simon316 and every now and then we, are, we will answer some questions, especially when, uh, <laughs> when things just die in video games. But we did say we were going to talk about Banjo-Kazooie. Yes. Uh, which did come out um, where it came out, I'll tell you right now it came out in North America on the 29th of June 1998 and it came out in the EU on the 17th of July 1998 which is obviously next week how that's possible I don't know how we're 20 years removed from, from Banjo-Kazooie being released is, it's, it's just nuts especially because really you know back in 1998 you think of what else was going on like Ocarina of Time came out Metal Gear Solid came out Half-Life came out and you know, in fact, we must be. It must be twenty years since Ocarina of Time came out this November, then, right? Yeah, I don't know the specifics. I never played Ocarina of Time when it came out. I, mean, I don't know. That's, I'm looking up. That must be true. Am I wrong? Maybe I'm wrong. No, it is November twenty first. Night. Bloody hell! So, I mean, the fact I mean, it was a good game, of course it was, but the fact we're still talking about it is it is ridiculous. What, and, Ocarina of Time? Uh, no, no, Banjo Kazooie. Oh, okay. Sorry. And, and what? So, when did Goldeneye come out? Now I'm getting confused. <laughs> Just all the same, yeah. But it was, though, wasn't it? That's what it was, 97, <laughs> bloody hell. So is this basically, and not the follow-up, that's the wrong word, but was Banjo-Kazooie the game that followed Rare? Uh, followed uh, Goldeneye, sorry, from Rare? I keep forgetting uh, Rare made Goldeneye. I was just like, oh, yeah, shit. Yeah. Uh, no, it wasn't. They made Goldeneye. Then they made Donkey Kong Land Three. Then they made Diddy Kong Racing. Then they made Banjo Kazooie. No, 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 pumping them out. Yeah, no, no wonder everyone loves flipping Rare. That's ridiculous. And they made. Why do these take so long? I know it's, it's just crazy. And then Perfect Dark came out in two thousand. That was the end. I know people like Perfect Dark. Sorry. Then it was the end. Then, then from there we started. Oh no, God, Perfect, Perfect Dark Zero came out. And then it yeah, was... that's probably better. That's a probably way to put it. But the thing with Banjo Kazooie was. I think the reason everybody went so nuts over it is that they basically created a Nintendo platformer, but Nintendo hadn't done it. I think that's why people were so in awe of the whole thing. Yeah. Just because no one else could do that. You know, the question was always, how, how do we 
tap in to this magic that Nintendo are doing, especially Nintendo themselves, because it takes time to make a video game without compromising quality. And in Rare, they found this company that somehow could not only make awesome first-person shooters, and don't forget how impressive and influential GoldenEye was on all of that, but then came out with a game that was basically Mario, and some people prefer it to Mario. I personally didn't, but... As a, you know, taking those templates as an inspiration and coming out with this, I mean, it is still to this day one of the best games that came with Nintendo 64. And for many people, a franchise that's missed and that people want to see it come back, which it kind of did with um, what's Platonic Ukulele. Games. It's called Ukulele. I mean, it's not the same, but again, it's a different time, it's a different era. It's still pretty decent, but yeah, not, not really to the, to the levels that were. Um, I don't know. I, just, I, I mean, I, I don't think it's, it's difficult to try and explain. The impact it had, just because again we don't have the power of context, because we're in 2018. This came out in 1998. Yeah, it's it. I think they did a good job of just pumping your personality, uh, just from everything from the soundtrack, which everyone knows, and to to the to the noises they made when they talked, and the the fact that they put it full of color as well on the Nintendo 64 is obviously very important. And they just knew how to make it memorable. It seems it seems like it was a sort of conscious decision. Um, it's not aged very well though. That's the only thing. It's just not aged. A lot of the Nintendo 64 games, as opposed to the PlayStation, in my opinion, just have not stood the test of time. I love which it. Is a shame. I love it because that stupid controller where you've only got one stick. Yeah, with, one with... really highly elevated stick in the middle rung of this three pronged monstrosity. Yeah, that, that, that controller is a discussion for another day. Do you want to know a fact about that controller? Uh, please. If you pull. So if you, you know it had like the three prongs. Yeah. If you pull the middle prong out in your head, that is the Wii's nunchuck. Yeah, yeah, I've seen yeah. that actually alongside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is the, the little, there's a little fact for everyone. That's Nintendo right there. Nintendo summed up. And you're right. I mean, Ocarina of Time before it got remade was impossible to play. Same with Mario 64. I mean, the frame rate, if nothing else, my word. None of them I had actually, any. I actually played that at university in 2014 and finished it with Which, my friend. What, Banjo-Kazooie? No, uh, Ocarina of Time original. Did you really? How? How did you not drive you nuts? With a lot of internet guides. <laughs> uh, how people did played it pre-internet. It wasn't pre-internet, you know what I mean? Early internet. It was just crazy because I, I have no idea where to go at any point in that game. I had the guide open for 100% of that game. I did Just it. to know where to go. I don't know. I never cheated on that game. No idea. No idea how oh, I did that. Even made it through that water temple. You, know, you tell me, man. I'm with you. You tell me. The, I've got no the clue. water temple just... Oh. Just yeah, yeah. But uh, I, the thing, what? When did Ratchet and Clank? Well, what came first, Ratchet? What was the other one? You had Ratchet and Clank, and what was the other PS2 game that they? Uh, uh, Jack Dexter, one. Which came out first? The poor man's Ratchet and Clank. Um, I don't know to be honest. I'm gonna say Ratchet and Clank. So I remember very early adverts now when the PS2 came out with the chicken when pe- people were getting turned into chickens and stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna estimate 2003. Jack and Dexter was first. Was it? Jack and Daxter came out 2001, and then literally Ratchet and Clank came out 2002. Oh, wow. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it literally came out a year later. I mean, because I mean, the reason I wanted to bring that up is because that's the influence that Banjo Kazooie had. That's yep. in, my, in my head, I mean, you can call me wrong, but you know, we had all of a sudden these kind of cartoony team up games because of Banjo Kazooie. That's what it is. No, I never it, thought of that, actually, yeah. I mean, that, but that's, that's how I took it. Like, it, it made such an impact, and people, it, it, it almost. You know, because obviously Sonic and things like that were a response to Mario. And Banjo-Kazooie managed to have that same, you know, similar kind of, oh my gosh, well, we need to have this on our console, otherwise we're not, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to fall behind. Now, you know, somewhat hilariously, I think what Ratchet and Clank still being made these days, is it not? Or is it Jack and Daxter still being made? I get confused. There's too many. Ratchet and Clank. Um, yeah. that's, that's the, like, rebooted film one. And then, no, that's not, right. Don't think, I think Jack and Daxter's dead. Um but yeah. Yeah, but obviously, you know, Banjo Kazooie went Banjo 2 in, then Nuts and Bolts. That was it. Three. Yeah. I had some uh, handheld versions. We don't need to worry about those. Um, but I, I remember it was just. It was just crazy. In 1998, well, I was still a very, very young man. I was in my teenage years, but I was still a very young man. Uh, and yeah, to get a game after. I mean, Mario 64 came out and just blew the world. But, you know, there was still. Uh, looking at it now in hindsight, there were still flaws with that. And Rare kind of. Got rid of those flaws. I mean, again, if you go back and play it now, those flaws are still there. But they, I'm not saying it's a better game. But I would say at the time, it was a certainly more polished idea of that example of what 3D platforming was. And that's the other thing. You know, when Mario 64 comes out in 1996, 
No one had, 3D platforming sounds silly saying it now, but 3D platforming was not a thing. It was, it yeah. was something we all had to get used to. So two years later, when you've not only got another company doing it, but they've got the same kind of Tony Star, but it feels original, it feels unique, and it's really tough, and it's got a sense of humor and personality and characters, and you know, all this stuff that you love. It's no wonder everybody went nuts about it. I mean, it got, I, 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 I'm pretty sure it, it didn't got perfect scores, but, you know, it got high nines and nines and all that. It got 8 out of 10 at Edge. That's all you need to know. Back then, 8 out of 10 at Edge may as well have been well done. You've, you've beaten Edge. <laughs> it just didn't get any scores. Um, but I, I just think, I thought it was great. I thought it was a great game. I, I still think of it fondly today. It was kind of one of those games that you got and you told your mates about, oh, you got this Banjo-Kazoo game. It's really, really good. Um, and yeah, I, I imagine it would have been one of the games of the year, but it just came out in the most stupid year ever where it probably didn't have a chance to begin with. Yeah, exactly. And I think I think people have rose tinted goggles about it, though. People are just like, yeah, yeah, I'll play it every summer. And I'm just like, I guarantee you don't, because that game is not playable in 2018. Oh, no, no, no. Today, none of them are. There's 3D platforming games with that controller you just cannot. You just I can't. actually think Super Mario 64 holds up. Not perfectly, but it does hold up, whereas Banjo Kazooie does not. I think, um, as I, was so. saying, I, I think Mario 64 holds up when it goes through a modern filter, if that makes sense. Not the, uh, the Nintendo DS version. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I, I still think I find any Nintendo sixty four, you know, game impossible to play, just because of all the you know all the technical limitations that comes with it. But I, I, as I said before, Banjo Kazooie is not better than Mario sixty four back then, but it had the benefit of coming after it. So any kind of flaws or not flaws, but things you can say, oh, maybe we could have done this, maybe we could have that. Banjo Kazooie did insert that into their game and again while they weren't necessarily great the fact that they existed nintendo a hundred percent then went oh we're now gonna borrow from you as well that's why it was so important it was a it was a non-nintendo game that actually helped nintendo develop better games but on a nintendo console it was like everything was working in in unison with each other um but i still agree with you i would never play it today i'd rather die and banjo and banjo tui i mean i think that's what kind it was all right but that never I was maybe it's just because it was a couple of years later or whatever I don't know but when that came out I was like I don't it doesn't really feel the same it, I mean, it was the same obviously I don't know I can't explain I it. don't remember a lot of it but I remember it being like the same just more more of it um, which is probably what people wanted but yeah 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 but no given that we're 20 years on yeah don't go play Banjo Kazooie uh, you're never going to see a remake of it I'd assume just because of all the nonsense that goes on with Rare Nintendo uh, it's just too hard too many license issues too many problems. And uh, yeah, it's it's got loads of merchandise at the, at the moment. Have you seen loads of uh, big statues and plushies and stuff like that? Um, Are there? Yeah, Mark Sotter just released a plushie and uh, like a three hundred quid statue, and uh, like you can get stuff in Sea of Thieves to do with Banjo Kazooie as well. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Just yeah, I didn't know. And, that. Well, surely Nintendo. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Well, I thought Nintendo would be like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> I don't know who owns all that stuff though. I don't know. Are you right? I don't know. I don't know. I'm looking at you now. You're right. You can get. A, you can buy a big, a big banjo kazooie statue. Should you so want? That is so strange. Do you think they'll ever do anything with it again? No. Nah, I think it's 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 too too far gone. I think it's you can't make it the same as the originals because you just. I think if they tried to make another 3D platform, it just end up being one of those 3D platformers that's out there already, and. But if you make it the same with all the flaws, then it doesn't fit in 2018. Um, you could do a nuts and bolts with it and just do something different with it. But then all the fans would be like, no. Um, so there's a, I think it's just a sort of a catch, catch 22. I don't think I don't think there's anything you could do with that series now that would keep the fans happy. So you'd rather sort of keep their sparkling, twinkling eyes alive rather than kill something in front of them. So I, I killed it. They killed it for me. The statue is four hundred and twenty nine dollars. What? What? That is insane. People pay that. Though. It's just exploit it. I want another game. I have, I'll have the statue. I have anything. And then, ha ha ha! Four hundred and twenty nine dollars. Wow. What's it made out of? <laughs> Gold. Um, <laughs> Solid titanium. Uh, well, you get free Sea of Thieves DLC code and bear and bird figurine in game item. So there's that. I well, can't, there you go then. I can't. I mean, it weighs five point three kilograms. So it's made out of something strong. If some if some burglar breaks to your house, you could pop a clobber on. You could, that. you could. I can't, I can't figure out what the hell it's made from. If it's there, I can't see it. Um, <laughs> I guess whatever. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. That's that's also highly detailed base capturing the exact same jiggy straight from the original band. It was not straight from the game, is it? The game's not real. 
<laughs> and also it's a puzzle piece like you'd have to be like it's authentic it's just like yeah it's a puzzle piece like there's also a one hour nine minute video of them making it if you should you want to go watch that oh, God. Um, that is that is oh, well i guess you gotta try and sell it but fair play if you like brendan because i get it it did it did have its place in time uh you know it is important in the grand scheme of things when you well the platform has kind of died off but like i say it, it did it did it really really did uh, and yeah 20 years on 20 years on and and Mad, just it terrifies me. In twenty, well, we're gonna be in twenty years' time. We're gonna be talking about God of War being twenty years old. I'm glad you mentioned God of War because the, we will end with this. Uh, the creator of God of War has come out and said they would like to do a Netflix version of that series. And I tell you right now, that would be fucking excellent. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it seems very because it was very story based, wasn't it? Like, we're very story driven. This one. And it also kind of ties into TV shows that are already popular. It's a bit Game of thrones -y, it's a bit vikings -y. You know, I think it would serve that premise very, very well. If you cast Kratos, right? Honestly. Honestly, I, when I first heard it, I was like, you've done Castlevania, can absolutely do God of War. Why the hell Jason not? Momoa, isn't it? Jason Momoa will be Kratos. Yeah, it? that would work. You need to just get that voice a bit deeper, which I'm sure he can do. And he's, then, he's got quite a deep voice, hasn't he? Well, you've got to be super deep if you're Kratos. I'm talking. Oh, yeah. You got. You got. <laughs> you got to put it down. Put it down right off. So, yeah. Um, I, I, I have all the Netflix things they talk about. I hope that happens. I think that would be awesome. Yeah, I think that'd be good. It's just you got to be careful when handling those delicate licenses that people love and esteem so highly. I mean, especially with something like that, you get it wrong. People are going to be mad. Yeah. Uh, now, Sam, as it, we have to do this, as is the last time we're going to talk before the World Cup. Have you been watching it? Do you care about football? Are you enjoying it? I, 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 I definitely do. I was coming home. So. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I hate that song and I hate that phrase. I just do. I hate it. I tell you why I, I hate, hate it. it. But then everyone got behind it and I feel like there's very little times, especially with Brexit going on and all that shit, there's relatively little times where the, the country gets together. I can't You're remember right, everyone right. feeling together since 2012. When even people who did like the Olympics were getting on board for like the beach volleyball and shit, and now everyone's getting on board singing songs about it's coming home, and it's just really nice to see. And like I think I, I could put on my my cringe, I could take off the cringe hating hat for a second just to be behind the England team and have a bit of positivity for once. Dude, but yeah, no, um, can't argue with that. That is a wonderful statement of intent. I like that. <laughs> I like that. I will say. The people that ruin it for everybody else, you're awful human beings, but we won't talk about them. I'll just say that in passing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, maybe in a week's time, we will be talking about... Um, Many of us are still conscious from the booze up on the Sunday yeah. night. But, uh, but maybe, maybe England will be champions of the world. Champions yes. of the world. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what a world we would live in? Uh, right, on that note, we will wrap it up. Uh, games will get exciting again soon, I promise. If not, we'll just keep smashing out talking about retro games and uh, doing Q&As for the next few weeks. But thank you very much for listening. Uh, please do subscribe if you haven't already subscribed on iTunes or whichever service you use. Also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash The Middle Report Rules. On SoundCloud, just search for The Week in Gaming on all podcasting apps. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Simon316. That's Instagram and all other kind of things too. Sam, we always forget your Twitter handle, but I'll put it in the description anyway, unless you've remembered it now. No. Nope. <laughs> I like it. That's the way. Uh, that's the way social media should be treated. It's a. Uh, it's a. It's a. It's a. Well, we won't talk about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I think that's pretty much it. Oh, it's all supported by Patreon.com. Patreon.com for the summer three sixteen. That's how I'm able to do this stuff. Uh, I should also say, and Sam will get this as news as well. We will uh, actually be a little delayed next week because um, it's coming uh, home. It, well, it, well, it's coming home. But also, I'm in Newcastle for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday as I am wrestling on Defiance, uh, on, on a Defiant show for their Ringmaster tournament. But I'll be, back, I'll be back on Wednesday, and then Sam and I will convene, and we'll figure out when we can do it. So there will be one next week. We'll just figure out when. But yeah, Monday I'll be all the way. Maybe I will have time on, you, on Monday. I may, I may find a couple of hours, and we'll be able to do it. I have my laptop with me, but I will let you know. Um, but as yep. always, thank you for listening. Thank you for letting us our live. Sam, thank you very much. No, it's always a pleasure. No, indeed it is. Indeed it is. And we will talk to you all very soon.